Early testing shows that the Omicron variant may be able to partially evade the protection provided by vaccines. We asked a local doctor about those tests and if we should be concerned. Now, as you know, the Omicron variant is the latest variant of concern that resulted from SARS-CoV-2 virus mutating. Most mutations fortunately provide the virus with no new advantage, but sometimes mutations can allow the virus to spread more easily or evade the human body's immune response. Omicron's genome has around 50 five zero mutations, which is unusually high, including more than 30 mutations in the spike protein. Remember, the spike protein is the part that initially interacts with the human cells to help the virus gain entry into the cell and has been the primary target for current vaccines. And because of that, there's a lot of concern that the current vaccines don't work as well against Omicron. And to find out if this is true, scientists in South Africa have tested the blood of 12 people. Those people were vaccinated with the vaccine developed by Pfizer, and they tested if the Omicron variant is um, effectively neutralized by this. And they found, I found that the vaccine generated 1 40th of the infection fighting antibodies against Omicron compared with its performance against the original version of the virus. It sounds very low, but I still don't think we need to panic. The study was done only on 12 patients and measured antibodies in the lab. It did not measure if the vaccine prevented an infection with Omicron in the real world setting or how serious the symptoms of an infection with Omicron were in a vaccinated patient compared to a non-vaccinated patient. They also didn't study other parts of the immune response, like the T-cell response, that are critical in a vaccine's overall potency against disease. The lead scientist of the study said that the vaccines may not prevent infection, but will likely be enough to significantly reduce the risk of severe disease. Now, what can we do? And something that will definitely help is to have as many antibodies against SARS-CoV-2 as possible, which is why it's so important to get vaccinated and six months later get the booster. We also asked about a new antibody drug that's showing some promise in the fight against Omicron. So for quite some time, monoclonal antibodies have been used as an effective outpatient treatment for COVID-19 to prevent severe disease. It's important that they be started early in the disease because then they can reduce the risk of serious illness. Most monoclonal antibody treatments target the spike protein and as I just said, that's where the majority of Omicron's mutations lie. And there's a concern that these drugs then could prove less effective. And it has actually been shown that many of them are less effective. One monoclonal antibody is developed by GlaxoSmithKline and that was actually designed to target a spot on the spike protein that is less vulnerable to mutations. And Glaxo said that their COVID-19 antibody treatment was effective against the Omicron variant in lab studies. They tested the drug against the whole spike protein of the virus, and the data showed that the drug was only a bit weaker against Omicron, but that difference was not significant. The doctor also talked about a new COVID vaccine that's showing some promise, and unlike the others, this one comes from plants. Yeah, this is a really interesting new way to make a vaccine, actually. Vaccines work by showing the immune system something that looks like a virus, but isn't. Doing that allows the immune system to prepare itself in case the real virus should show up. A Canadian biotech company has been making a vaccine against SARS-CoV-2 where the vaccine lookalike is something called a virus-like particle. And this virus-like particle is produced in plant cells. Those plant cells were given genetic instructions and they make the coronavirus spike protein. One advantage of the new vaccine is it does not need special freezers to store it. Standard refrigeration is adequate, which actually is a huge benefit. Now, how effective is this new vaccine? And the company reports positive results from a large study. The study tested more than 24,000 volunteers in six different countries, half got the vaccine, half a placebo, and the vaccine had an about 74 to 78% efficacy to prevent modern and severe disease. This is actually quite good, considering that all of the COVID-19 cases in the study were caused by the newer variants and not by the wild type. We also asked about the two new pills to treat COVID and their effectiveness. 
So since the pandemic started, researchers across the world have been trying to make new drugs that end coronavirus. However, unfortunately, not everything in research is a big success. Developing a drug includes many, many steps. The first thing is the drug needs to be tested in a Petri dish to see if it works against cells. Then if the results are promising, it's tested in animals. And that, if that is successful, the drug then can be advanced to clinical trials. And there are different phases of clinical trials. A drug can fail at any stage of the development, development and many, if, most, if not most, do. Even drugs that can make it into clinical trials often are disappointing. Fortunately, there are two new COVID-19 pills that are coming out soon, hopefully, and are expected to work against all versions of the virus. The first one is made by Merck and called Molnupiravir. And the way it works is that it causes mutation in the virus that makes it unable to replicate. So it can't multiply anymore. Reduces the risk of hospitalization and death from COVID-19 by 30% if it's taken within five days of the onset of symptoms. So it also needs to be taken early. However, this drug has the potential to cause mutations, not just in the virus, but in people's own DNA, which I think is really scary. Britain has authorized this drug in early November, but they said it should not be given to pregnant or breastfeeding women and that women who could become pregnant should use contraception while taking the drug and for four days after. The second drug is one developed by Pfizer, may actually perform much better than the one by Merck. Um, the first version of this drug was developed nearly two decades ago when Pfizer researchers were researching for a drug that could fight the coronavirus that caused the first SARS epidemic. And they built a drug that blocks an essential viral protein. That protein is known as a protease. Proteases act like molecular scissors. They cut long molecules into pieces and that helps build new viruses. And the drug works like a piece of gum that's just stuck between those scissor blades. When the COVID-19 pandemic hit last year, research at the company put the drug off the shelf and tried it against SARS-CoV-2, and then modified it to work against the protease of the new coronavirus, and then changed it so it could be taken as a pill, so by mouth. And an analysis showed that this drug actually works really well, 85% efficacy. This drug is called Paxlovid, and the FDA could authorize it by the end of the year. Finally, we asked if we do see another surge in cases this winter, if she expects it to be from Omicron or from Delta. And I really don't know. <laughs> it's really too early to say how widespread the Omicron variant will become in the US. More than a dozen states have reported cases so far, and the number will likely significantly increase in the coming days and weeks. However, as I said, it's too early to predict if the winter surge will be from the Omicron variant or from Delta, and Delta still causes significant issues and has already caused surges in several states. Omicron is a really no, a new, so we don't know much about it. We don't know if it's more transmissible and capable of causing more serious illness. Um, there is evidence that Omicron can reinfect people more easily. And while vaccinations lower the risk of infection and severe disease, it is still possible, unfortunately, for fully vaccinated people to get infected and transmit the virus to other people, especially, it seems, with Omicron. Researchers in South Africa show that the virus appears to be spreading more than 10 times as quickly as the original virus and more than twice as quickly as Delta. And Delta so far has been the variant that shows to be spreading the most, um, quick, um, most quickly. So what do we do? And the game plan to be prepared for the winter surge is the same, whether the surge will be caused by Delta or Omicron, get vaccinated, get the booster, wear a mask, wash your hands, avoid large crowds, and get tested frequently.